Hello, welcome back to Uncle Buck's Garage. Well, I've been surfing again, and I come across this short, it was about two-minute, um, about the difference between old Chevys and new Chevys, okay? So, it got me thinking, again, you know, time on my hands, so I got thinking. So, I was thinking, what are the differences, and what's the selling points, and what's the, between, say, a 78 Silverado, which I'm about to be done building, or a 2003 Silverado. So, the first thing that popped in my head was price. Okay, so this day and age, you can find, buy parts, and build a rock-solid, fun-to-drive, square-body Chevy, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about everything said and done. Okay, parts, um, tires, you know, everything. You can probably get into a and have one where you can rely on it, reliable, drivable Chevy, seventy Silverado, for five to eight thousand total. That's the total price. Oh, that's everything. You're having to replace, you know, suspension and shocks you know, maintenance, whatever you have to do. Matter of fact, the right now I'm sitting at about 3000 into this 78 and it's almost done for driving, enjoying drag racing, everything. It's I'm about three grand in now. I'm lowballing it because I'm doing a lot of the work myself and I'm using older parts and fixing everything as I go. But it can be done if you've got the time and you've got the inclination and you've got the space or, you know, just the want to to do it. Okay. Now, I looked it up for a 23 Silverado, a base, single cab, short box, plain Jane, manila envelope, brand new price, 41000 that's sticker. That's not any options. That's no packages, no wheels, no nothing. They're thirty nine nine to forty one thousand. Brand new, three miles on them. That's a lot of dough. Okay, so here let's just start breaking this down. Okay, the first thing when I bought the Silverado, pulled it on the trailer to the tag office. Taxes, tags, everything, all said and done, was $135 out the door. And I owned the truck, and the title was in the mail five days later. $135, okay? Now, I don't know how it is in your state, but in Oklahoma, it's 25 to 3.5%, depends on what it is, what state, Oklahoma, Arkansas. If you're coming across, buying in Arkansas, coming in Oklahoma and tagging it. You're going to spend just in taxes, just in taxes, one to 2K. So we're just going to say 2K, just in taxes. The sales tax for the truck, okay? The tag is going to be, for Oklahoma, it's going to be anywhere between nine to 1300, 1300. So we'll just go 1K for that. Okay, so get in the truck. To get into the truck, to drive it off and to own it, that's $44,000 for a 2023. I bought this truck for less than two grand and I walked out the door for $135, owning it. <laughs> Done. So there's a big difference there. Okay, that's a huge difference. All right. The next one is going to be insurance. Insurance for my truck, even though I'm 55 years old and I run liability insurance because Oklahoma allows you to learn liability insurance. Here in Oklahoma, my insurance costs me 300 bucks a year. A year for liability insurance for this truck. It's been insured since uh, when I got the tag. That 2023, the insurance on that's going to be one, uh, according to my insurance agents, be 150 to 225 dollars a month 
depending on your driver record, depending on your age, depending on boy or girl. That's ju that's just insurance, guys. That's just the way it is. You know, I mean, that's just the way it goes. Okay, so so if you figure we'll go in between, we'll say two hundred bucks a month. That's twenty four hundred dollars a year. Twenty four hundred a year. Okay, so your yearly costs so far just buying it, paying the taxes on it, tagging it, and insuring it is. Forty six five ish, for okay. Let's just say forty six thousand for the two thousand twenty three Silverado. And so I'm so far into this truck, less than two thousand. So twenty four hundred bucks for the year. All right. Now to me, that's a you know the price for this. Now the other thing is. This is paid for. This is going to be a payment. Depending on your credit score and depending on how much money you make and depending on a lot of things, your payment on $41,000 a year, according to the little payment things, for a five-year note. For a five-year note, paying it for 60 months, your payment on this is going to be 800 to... 1200 a month to pay that off, to pay that payment in five months. Depending on your interest rate, depending on your state, depending on your driving, you know, depending on everything, your credit score, that's how much your payment is going to be. $1,000. $1,000 a month you're paying for at least 60 months. If you make a deal, make a balloon payment, make whatever, there's all kind of, they give you all kinds of options for making payments, but you're locked in. You're locked in this thing for twelve to fourteen hundred bucks a month of money going out, just to be able to sit in that brand new 2023 Silverado. I have gotten to the point in my life now that I turned fifty-five. Payments are the devil. I don't owe a penny on this. It's mine. My tag is going to cost me twenty-two dollars a year. It's fixing to come up in January. I just got the thing. $22 is what my tag is going to cost me. It cost me 300 bucks a year for insurance. And I am driving it yet, but I'm insuring it. I don't know why, but I am because I get a deal. I have everything insured under the same company. So I get a deal, which is another tip you can use. You insure everything under the same company. They'll cut you a deal if you're doing a package because including the house, I have the house, the cars, everything. Same agent I've had for 30 years. She's great. I love her. She's the best in the world. She treats me good. And so she's always done me well. All right. The next thing, besides the cost, is the coolness factor. Okay. How many times have you stopped what you're doing and checked out a brand new Chevrolet pickup truck driving down the road? Hmm? How many times? Can't hear it. It's quiet. You know, can't really mess with it when it's brand new because it's under warranty. You know, you can jack it up put lights on it things like that you can make it into a christmas tree you might get noticed then but you drive through town in the 78 that's rumbling and bumbling and slicked out and looks good stance is good rides good you sit you hear it before you see it it's got the coolness factor okay so coolness everybody loves these trucks Everybody loves these trucks. They get noticed. It's like riding a Harley Davidson. You get noticed when you're riding a Harley Davidson. I mean, you get noticed when you drive a square body nowadays because they're 40, 50 years old. Okay. So the coolness factor is just through the roof. You pull into a parking lot, you're going to get asked a ton of questions. You're going to get looked at. You're going to get noticed. Okay. The, the just there, it doesn't happen with a new truck, suburban. Uh, they're coming out with these new jimmies. I don't know if they're actually going to hit the market with them, but they say they're coming out with two-door uh, jimmies again. That would be cool, but it would still, it does not hit the coolness factor of the 78 or the, just a square body, flat nose, round nose, whatever you want to do. The C10s, if you're driving an old pickup truck, you get noticed. The next thing is toughness and longevity. 
This truck is about to be 50 years old. In a couple of years, it'll be 50 years old. All right. The frame, non-damaged. There's no, you know, the, the fenders have some rust. The doors in the cab have their issues. They all have their issues because back in the day, this was created as a tool, a farm implement. Okay. But because of that, the suspensions are rock solid. They'll, you can run them into a wall and they'll just go, hey, get off me. You know, they are as tough as they come, okay? They're still here 50 years later, 60, 70 years later. They're still here. They're still viable. They, you can still build them. You can still get parts for them. They're still here. You, you can't convince me that that Mexican made down in Mexico, they're produced in Mexico now, that that cheap plastic, aluminum, tinny, thin fenders, you can't tell me that that truck is going to be sitting in a field somewhere being able to be restored in 50 years. Just not going to happen, okay? I have a 09 out there that's got 159,000 miles on it, and I know once that motor goes, that suspension is starting to get a little tweaky and everything. I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of work to it. But I know for a fact that once that thing is 50 years old, it ain't going to be on the road no more. There's going to be nothing left of it. It's going to rattle apart. You know, it just, it just not the, the toughness factor. They're not built as farm implements anymore. They're built as passenger cars because that's the market. That's the market. That's how they get sold. Every soccer mom in the world wants to have a jacked up four door, Silverado with a with a brush guard on front of it, you know, a bull bar, a light bar. They they want to be, you know, that's the thing. That's the end thing. If they're not driving a bourbon, you know, they just haven't made it up the the ladder. You know, it's a status symbol, but they're not going to be around. They're definitely not going to be around. And the other thing is is parts interchangeability. I can take pretty much besides the fender and the grill, I can take every part from seventy three to 87 or 86, 73 to 86, I can put every part, take one off, put it on the other one. Like Legos, you can just motor mounts, everything, body panels, body parts, you know, um, cab part, everything interchanges. They've gotten to where they make these things so year specific, you can't take one off and put on the other. You can't change years. They change it up so much that there's no interchangeability involved. So you're, you're specific when it comes to when you need to do replacement parts, fenders, hoods, whatever you got, you know, it's, it's kind of messed up. I could take, and I can build this truck from end to end exactly how I want it without any extras. Okay. When I bought that 09 out there, there was still an option of buying what I called a highway truck, a highway department's truck. It was it was 5.3, overdrive transmission, 373 posi with a tow package and a transmission cooler. Rubber floor mats, window hand cranks, no amenities, no heated seats, no power windows, no nothing. The only thing I asked for was an XM radio. And I ordered it that way and got it three days later, okay? And when he threw me the cost of that, that paper across the table, and, uh, and he said, this is how much it's going to cost, I said, this is a joke, right? He said, no, this is not a joke. This is, I got a brand new in 09 with three miles on it for $18,000 out the door. Four-door, tow package, 373 posi, 5.3, Brand new truck, three miles on it for $18,000. Well, GM has figured out they were losing money. Now, if you want rubber floor mats, it's going to be in a $1,500 package. If you want heated seats, it's going to be in a $2,800 package. It's going to be added to the cost of the truck. You can't specifically just order one thing. You have to order a package of things, which comes, if you want a set of wheels, you have to buy a set of wheels with a set of tires, with a set of this, with the bars for this and things for that. It's a whole package deal. To get what you want, you can't individually. You have to buy a package. I can buy the wheels I want. 
the stereo system I want, anything I want to do on this truck, I can buy. The parts are out there. That's the other thing. The parts ability for the aftermarket on this truck is tremendous. There are companies out there that's all they do is sell square body stuff. I mean, specific, I mean, the aftermarket on these, you're going to get a, a pre-programmer and you're going to get a, a cat back exhaust system and maybe a set of headers and a cold air box. That's it. That's it. You know, they, they just don't make this stuff like this. So this truck can be built exactly the way I want it. And I can spend money where I want to spend money and not have to buy other things I'm not interested in. Can't do that here. Can't do that on a new truck. It just doesn't work that way. They figured out the game. Again, they figured out the market and they make it where you can't just order it specifically how you want it. They just don't come that way anymore. They don't make any money on it. They make money on seat and heated seats and backup uh, cameras and things like that. You know, try, you know they that they make money on those packages. They're selling parts that you wouldn't normally buy because it's in the package. You have to buy it to get what you want. So if you're here right now, like, share, subscribe, smash that bell, hit that button, tell your friends. Here's the bottom line for this story today is that I don't think I'll ever buy another new truck. I've got friends that have them, new Ford, Chevy Dodge, no matter what it is. They're not, the quality is, and the, and the utility is just not there. If I was to buy a new truck now, it would be to haul things. Put it on trailer, haul it around, yank stuff out of weeds. I would be beating on it. I'm better off with my paid 409 out there than to buy a new truck and spend $45,000 in insurance and payments. I'll just build one. Another thing about the toughness factor, the toughness factor is this truck, the 78, steel bumper, steel grill parts, steel fenders, steel everything, bumper brackets, supports, locked in. This thing takes a hit. It's going to crinkle it a little bit, which it's got a little crinkle on it now. From the, the fender took a little hit, but I guarantee you it was a big hit to bend that fender. These, you do a minor fender bender, you've done $10,000 worth of damage. $10,000 worth of damage. I get a fender bender in this one. I can find a new, uh, I can either straighten the um, bumper that I have and find some new pieces in the front for a couple hundred bucks. Change them out. Be done. Start back up. Start driving it again. I've done it. The 70s vehicles, I, I had an old 70s car, metal bumpers, everything, and I wasn't paying attention. I was a you know 17, dumb 17-year-old, and I ran into a back of a, it was a, this is, yeah, it was a, like an 89 Lynx like an Escort, like a little small hatchback, destroyed the back of that car. It just fell to pieces. The little dingy ball, the little hacky sack balls fell out every, everywhere. And I had a bump on my bumper about that big. Never hit the brakes. Hit her at 35 miles per hour from the back. That's You do that in this. Not paying attention to what you're doing. You're running in the back of somebody with this. That's ten, fifteen thousand dollars because everything is plastic. The only thing metal on a newer truck is the actual ugly bumper part. A little strip about this wide goes around the front because that's because they have to. Okay, there has to be a metal support there under all that plastic fascia, fascia, the covers, everything that makes it look like a front end of a pickup truck, which is not front end. It's just a bunch of plastic, which is low weight, low cost. You know, plastic is cheaper than metal. So they're just not built the same. I know I've been going on for quite a bit, but that's just my feelings. I don't think I'll ever buy a new one. Just, I don't, I think I'll rebuild my old stuff and I'll build, if I need a tow vehicle, I'll build a tow vehicle because I can build it how I want. But air conditioner, you can be in there for, and you can be paid for. And the insurance is cheap. 
and the taxes are cheap and everything is, is I can't fathom paying cuz if you option one of these out like everything like a suburban it's more than I owe on my house more than I owe on my home and 4 acres it's ridiculous it's unbelievably ridiculous so I say if you have the way, if you have the means, and don't say you don't know how because there's all, a lot of us out there that are teaching everybody every day about how to do this stuff. There's a way with these phones, there is a way to learn how to do it at home with home tools. I've done this whole truck at home with home tools. No lifts, no specialty tools, hand tools that I had in the garage already. This can be done with these and with sweat equity. It can be done. You can create a piece of art that you're proud to drive in and enjoy driving because you know, even if it gets hit, you can put it back together again at home in your own garage by your own hands. Not with this. Not going to happen. Just not going to happen. So if you're still here, like, share, and subscribe, smash that button, hit that bell, tell your friends, check out UncleBuckStuff.com. If you would like to buy a t-shirt or a hat to help out the channel, y'all have a great day. Because great day today can mean built the way you want it for cheap tomorrow. Y'all be good.